So a few weeks ago when I did the first video on the ESP32 and Sense ESP, one of my friends, Captain Phil, he said to me, oh, that's all very well, but what about a battery monitor for our boats? So I thought to myself, well, maybe that's something I should take a look at. So as it's been a bit cold in the last few weeks and I've not been able to do the second part of the first video, which was going to be on the boat actually installing. So what I'm going to do here is going to show you through the battery monitor that I'm putting together that will go on my boat, which as you all know, my boat's got a open plotter, a Signal K server on board with a Raspberry Pi, but Phil's boat doesn't have that. What Phil's boat has is a NEMA 2000 or a CTOC NG system. So his battery monitor will have to be compatible with the NEMA 2000. So let's, let's talk about the parts. So first of all, the, uh, this is, uh, the same as before. It's a, it's a, um, fire beetle two. So a fire beetle ESP 32 dash, um, E, uh, and basically that's about a $9. It was actually when I first bought these were about $6 and now they're about $9. But even so, it's still a, it's still a good deal. I've, I've bought about four of these for different projects uh, that I'm just playing with right now. So that's that. Um, we also need a power supply to drop from um, 12 volts, the boat voltage, to uh, to the five volts that this requires. And, and previously I'd used uh, some that I had uh, uh, lying around, um, but now, I've run out of those, so I bought these other ones. I wanted to try them; they're a little bit different. Um, this is the this is the component right here, and as you see, it's pretty small, right? It's going to sit underneath the bottom of the fire beetle, so it's going to hide under there. I'm, I'm, I'm probably just going to attach it somehow to the bottom, um, and this will be on on a little stand, and uh, eventually I'll I'll uh, get one of my friends to uh, to three D print a case for it. But basically, this is what the part is, and uh, the 12 volts come in here, and then out of there goes a voltage. Um, now, this particular one I wanted to try because not only does it have the little potentiometer where you can set whatever voltage you want, but it also allows you to, um, to, to actually see these jumpers on the back. You can um, solder between one of these lines and cut uh, the other connection and basically you can get a set voltage so there's a five volt output right on the back there so that's what i'll probably do i'll solder across there and then cut the the uh, connection to the potentiometer so here's some resistors we also need some capacitors so here's a couple of capacitors and then the 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 whole brains of this thing is basically this board and this board is a ina 219 dc current monitor and that's what the board looks like. They're pretty, pretty good, these boards, and we'll talk through those in more depth later. You also need a shunt. So a shunt really is just a, a resistor. This shunt that we've got here uh, is one that I calculate would give us about 50 millivolts of drop uh, for about 100 amps. So I think that's probably about right for what we're going to need on the boat. I've got three batteries. I don't think I'm ever pulling more than 300 amps. If you go and buy shunts, you know, you've probably seen shunts by Victron or, or somebody like that. Um, they're much more expensive, but that's because they come with all sorts of stuff attached to them. This is actually just the resistor. Um, and then we're going to need some project boards, so uh, just to do some of the connections. So here's a project board. And then this is, is going to go on Phil's boat, but not on mine. And it's this board by Waveshare. 
And what this will do is connect to the Namer 2000 circuit to speak directly to the Namer 2000 system. As you see, it's pretty small, right? It's a pretty small board. It's gonna basically go in on one of these, but I think it'll end up actually on here and, and sort of lay down. Um, but yeah, it's, it's gonna, it's like that. So those are most of the components. Uh, I think that's that's actually pretty much it. This is the board. So here's the, the uh, Fire Beetle board that we're using. So we split it up into three circuits, power circuit, the I squared C circuit, because those INA 219 boards use the I squared C interface on either the Raspberry Pi or in this case on the ESP32. So yeah, you could do this on your Raspberry Pi directly if you wanted to. Uh, and then the one wire circuit. So here's the power supply. As you can see, you've got the 12 volts coming in and then the five volts out. And as I said before, I'm gonna look at the panel on the back here and I'm gonna solder across between the, the five volt signal right here. And then at the top there, you, there's a little line that you cut and, and you cut that line to stop the pot, the potentiometer, working on the other side. So the INA219 boards, they work on the I squared C circuit. I squared C, you can really just connect things up in series. So as you can see, I've connected all three boards in the circuit, the lines just go together and go through. We're gonna dig into this one a, a little bit more. So we've got the battery coming in at the top there and the battery connects through a shunt and then into the normal system. So this shunt, is basically in between the battery and then your normal wiring that you would send to the rest of the boat on the positive side. These boards already come with a shunt involved. We need a much higher current shunt. So what we have to do is we have to remove uh, the resistor that's on the board. Uh, and you can see that's right here. Um, and you can see on this one, I've already removed it. So it's, it's gone. In order to, to have some level of filtering so it doesn't react to every single change in voltage, you're going to put in ceramic capacitors and it's basically going to go here like these two pins on this board here, the V in plus and the V in minus. So I'm able to basically just go between there through two resistors into the shunt to detect the voltage drop across a known resistance. And then from there, be able to see what current is being, uh, is being drawn. And then he, these are just one wire sensors. Now we've, we, in the last video, there was a bigger description of the one wire sensors, but these are very much the same things as, as we're using there. Um, so I am not gonna go into that in much detail. All right, so I'm, I wanna talk about the software. What we've got here is the initiation section uh, where we initiate INA219. Uh, you do have to access the library, but if you use my platform io.ne, you, you should uh, be fine. You'll be on GitHub, so you'll be able to download the software. But basically, what I've got is I've got three different addresses. I left one as is at 37 or 39, and then I grounded one of the pads, which gives you 41, and then I grounded the other pad, which gives you 44, and then I think if you ground both the pads, you get a fourth one. But basically, I underscored A, B, and C for where A is my start battery, B is my house one, and C is house two. Then uh, I defined what the shunt values is, and they, these are resistance of the shunt. So these are like 500 micro ohms. If you calculate what that is, 50 millivolt drop would give you 100 amps. You could go 200 amps, but the thing is, when you're only using electronics, I think you only be pulling a few amps and therefore the accuracy would be less. That's why I'm using that. Right, then basically the rest, this whole section here, basically grabs the, the information from the device. So the current is calculated from the shunt voltage, which is the drop across the shunt, turned into volts from millivolts, and then divided by the shunt resistance. And then the shunt voltage here is just pulled directly from the device. The bus voltage, is the voltage on the downstream side so down to the rest of your boat basically 
the load voltage here is the battery voltage and then the power is calculated using the voltage and the current we then take the, that data and we define them as current shunt voltage bus voltage load voltage and power and then we pass those to signal case server so current becomes electrical batteries whatever the battery is current load voltage becomes battery voltage and then the others are, are basically left in here for debugging but basically turn them off because i don't think we need them i think we need current voltage power and and then this one it really defines the state of charge and so it uses the load voltage and checks that against the state of charge and what it does is it goes up to the top where we have a, a curve so we define this curve and that this curve basically says if it's under 2.5 volts it's zero if it's under 10.5 volts or it's between 2 and 10.5 and it's zero and then basically after that it goes 10 percent 20 percent 30 percent 40 percent 50 percent over these voltages up into to the point where it's 12.6 being 100 percent so that's the curve that it's following okay so i've set up a bit of a demo here i've uh, borrowed um a uh, battery from the lawnmower upstairs um, so this, that's what we got here. We got the lawnmower battery here. We have the shunt piece already set up here with um, a resistor off there and also a resistor off there. This will be much tidier in the actual production one, but this is how it is. But you can see the battery is connected through the shunt into the other side where I've got two things connected. One of them is basically a battery charger connection and the other one is is a cigarette lighter um, connection here I have the uh, the ESP 32 and that is connected to the laptop um, it's got the connections here it's got three of the boards ready to set up for my my machine uh, or my uh, boat um, but what we've got here now is the, these two lines are connected to these uh, the, the the connections on the on the um, uh, on the battery, and what we we see if we look at the screen is you can see the the current is showing up about 0.8, and this is this is just through the data browser in uh, Signal K. So you've got uh, 0.8 amps. So we're not doing anything. It's it's actually using 0.8. I'm not sure what that is. Whether it's a data error or there's some seems to be some sort of parasitic loss. I don't know if it's real or not. I also have here calculated power. So that, that's a calculation based on the current and the voltage. And then uh, the voltage we've got is, is basically 13.29 or 296. So 13.3 volts. If we go to KIP, um, this is the battery C. So it's actually my house two. So if you look here, these are the house two. So nothing else is connected up. Um, so you, when things aren't connected up, you get funny voltages and stuff like that because nothing's grounded. So they, they sort of float and you get funny currents and stuff. House two battery current, house two battery meter. So that's a, a calculation that I set up, which looks at what the voltage is and makes an estimate of what your percentage, your battery life is. It's very simple. Then here we, we also have the gauge for the voltage. Now the voltage of the battery is 13.29, so it's rounded up to 13.3. So what I'm going to do here is I was looking for something that I have that's uh, that we can use as a, a load, and I was going to use an inflator, but then I thought, you know what, that's going to be really loud and we won't be able to hear anything. So uh, what I've got instead is this medical battery. It's a, it's a pretty big battery and it's discharged right now. So um, I'm going to plug it in and see what current it pulls. So this will be a discharging load. So it's plugged in now and, oh, it's, okay. So it goes, to, it's gone to four amps. Also the voltage dropped, which you expect. And what I'm gonna do now is actually uh, see what happens if I add a charger to the circuit. So here I have a, a trickle charger uh, that I use. It's a one amp slow charge. 
So we'll see what happens when I plug it in. You can see it started making a bunch of noise, so it's working. And then the current is dropping. So the current dropped to 1.2 amps. Um, so it is it is giving us about two amps. Yeah, so now, now with just the charging current, you can see that the current is now uh, a negative to show you that you're charging. There's load going back on, so it goes to 3.6 it went to, and then it, then it went to 2.3. And that's the, uh, that's the demonstration. Um, these will all be tidied up. The, the resistors, they'll be um, soldered on, or, and, and then actually the board that's there will be inside. So over the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be miniaturizing these components and doing the full layout to try and get it as small as possible and into a package that, that will um, go into the, the, the spot on my boat, which is where the batteries are. Um, there's plenty of room there because it is a, a lazarette, but but I, I don't want it to be in the way, so I want to just get it out of the way um, and it just be pretty much like you don't know it's there. Please like and subscribe. I'll post a full equipment list, full uh, list of all the components that I used, and I'll also post um, a link to the GitHub website uh, where the code is going to be. Uh, I'd love to hear from people. Thanks for watching.